And so here I already injected a little bit extra provisc into the sulcus just to deepen out the sulcus a little bit. That just gives, make sure that iris is pulled away so I get a nice view of the angle. I like to put viscoat onto the anterior surface of the cornea. This gives me the best visualization. You can use provisc as well. It doesn't usually really matter a lot. So the lens was just put in. We're pulling out, um, we're pulling out the ice then at this time. I'm gonna tilt my head about 20 to 30 degrees. Then I do the same thing with the scope. Um, Did you record? Did you record? Okay. This should, so now we can see it over here. So this is the new um, eye stent Inject W. So a couple things I want you to see, this is the new wide version of the stent. The bevel's a little bit bigger than the previous version. And one thing I like to make sure I do before I ever inject one of these stents is I'm gonna pull back on the injector, visualize that needle tip, move it forward again. This also makes sure that that mechanism is nice and smooth. I don't wanna be testing this for the first time inside of the eye because if it does have any sticking components, I wanna see that here and I don't wanna see it in the eye. So that movement felt really good. Now, when you keep in this position, you wanna make sure you're not reverting back to your old FACO techniques. I try to hold my hands up in comparison to where I would where I FACO. FACO, I just hold my hands straight, kind of parallel with the patient's face. Here, my face is tilted. So if I'm gonna keep parallel, I have to lift my hands up. So I'm gonna lift my hands up. You can see the bevel of the needle is coming down. I'm gonna wiggle my way into, the, into my um, primary incision. I'm gonna drop my gonio lens. I'm actually lifting sometimes the eye um, with the actual injector of the stent. So if you see me relax here, the eye comes down. If I put it in and lift, I can now visualize the angle quite nicely. Um, and so I'm gonna pull back on the injector. Here you can see that needle tip sitting right where it should be. Nice pigmented area of trabecular meshwork telling me that somewhere near this region, there must be some form of collector channel. I'm gonna insert that tip of that injector. You don't need to tent as hard with this version of the device. And I'm gonna inject and it's gonna go in perfectly. Just like that, a nice little blood reflux. I'm gonna rotate to the other side. I like a lot of this pigmentation right here. So I'm just gonna stick right in this area, a little bit of a tent and I'm gonna inject and it's gonna come out in a nice blood reflux. So that's a very nice um, demonstration of the new iStent Inject W. So now we rotate scope and head back up. You can see a t there was just a tiny little bit of blood um, inside of the eye when I left. And so chances of this person having a lot of blood efflux is relatively low. If you notice a lot as you're cleaning out the eye of all this viscoelastic, I always recommend giving the patient a heads up. It's, they have a lot easier time tolerating the blurry vision day one. If you give them a signal ahead of time that they're gonna be blurry and it's completely normal, it's gonna clear up all on its own. When I do have patients that do have blurry vision post-op day one um, from the injection and that little micro hyphema that can occur, I always give them a heads up. Your eyes functioning like a snow globe. Anytime you move around, the vision's gonna get blurry. When you stay seated or still for a long period of time, the vision's gonna clear up. It's gonna take about a week or potentially two weeks for that to fully resolve, but it will resolve all on its own. And she looks good.